The US-Saudi Arabia relationship is critical on a number of fronts, putting the US president in a difficult situation. Not only do the two countries have an arms sales deal worth billions of dollars and joint interest in curbing the influence of Iran in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia is said to have promised the Trump administration help with the Israeli-Palestinian peace deal. Now, Trump has been determined to separate the crown prince from the murder and is framing the issue as a choice between standing by or cutting off a key Middle East partner. Now, one side of the argument, there's that, and there are strong calls from the US to do more to clamp down on MBS accused of extensive human rights abuses. Joining me in studio, senior Middle East correspondent Mohammed al Qasim. Now, of course, Mohammed Trump is at odds with the CIA over their, I suppose, uh, I suppose their conclusion saying there's medium to high confidence that MBS was tied to this murder. So talk us through what the CIA has said. He's even, uh, the president is even at odds with his own party, the Republican Party, the majority of those who have been very vocal and uh, critical of the president come from the Republican Party. And the assessment uh, and evaluation from the CIA is that, uh, according to what we're hearing from Senator Lindsey Graham and others, that there's no way that the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, did not know about this, uh, this group of Saudis who went to Istanbul and and conducted this horrific uh, crime. What draws them to, the, to that conclusion if the words in this CIA briefing are that MBS had personally targeted Khashoggi to the extent of, quote, probably ordering his death? Probably ordering his death. And let's not forget that three of the 15 Saudis who went to Istanbul are very senior, high senior uh, officials. Three of them are his right hands, whether it's Saud al-Qahtani or the other to Saudis. Those are advisors to the Crown Prince. They have uh, a direct contact and relationship with him and they advise him on highly uh, important and uh, critical matters. Now, of course, so this show is about the fact that there's more than just one view. So let's bring in another perspective on this story. Rahim Kassam, former editor-in-chief of Breitbart News London. Uh, Rahim, great to have you with us. What's your take on the narrative circling MBS in the wake of the Khashoggi murder? Well, look, I mean, I think um, Lindsey Graham is, is, is probably correct in his assessment of the reliability, the long-term reliability uh, of MBS as a, as, a, as a partner, as an ally. Uh, but there's no doubting at the moment, and, and, you know, we can't deny reality that that, that that is what we have to deal with at the moment. So it seems uh, very peculiar to me that there are some people who are uh, wishing to throw out the baby with the bathwater over an issue like this. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's a horrifying uh, incident, but it's not an isolated incident. These things are, are routine. They're routine in a lot of authoritarian regimes around the world, and we seem to tolerate them um, only when we're told to tolerate them by some of our friends in the media. You know, we, we have had um, similar incidents such as this in Turkey. We have had similar incidents such as this in Iran. We have obviously had similar incidents in Russia. Um, and the same things are often trotted out. It's the sanctions, it's the removal of diplomats, it's the questioning, the investigation, so on and so forth. Uh, but at the moment, I mean, all eyes appear to be on the White House and specifically uh, on the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who appears to have been communicating uh, with MBS uh, post the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. So I think that's where uh, this hinges at the moment, and it's probably right to hinge um, on that uh, that level of investigation into this. But broadly speaking, geopolitically, um, I'm still bemused as to why we, we, we appear to be so surprised uh, that an authoritarian regime doesn't have respect for, 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 I mean, not press freedoms, because I don't necessarily believe that Jamal Khashoggi was a member of the press, per se. He was a, an opinion columnist who was overtly in favor of, of disrupting the Saudi administration. Um, but, but I'm not surprised by either side when it comes to that. All right, but when it comes to MBS, you've said that the focus is on uh, the White House. But the Khashoggi case has certainly shifted the focus towards the darker side of Salman's record, uh, one that includes, as, as you've referred to, the imprisonment of critics and human rights activists, thousands of civilian deaths in Yemen, and, of course, the rapid rise of uh, uh, the number of executions that, that have, have, have occurred since his ascent to power. So being a reformer, as you've referred to him in the past, doesn't, doesn't that, it of course, doesn't make human rights violations excusable. So where do you draw the line? 
Yeah, I mean, th th that's, you know, the, the million-dollar question at the moment. It's a, it's a question of, of, of the sort of extrajudicial nature of these things, which, of course, you know, totalitarian or authoritarian regimes don't have at their core. I mean, even, even democracies with, with human rights, uh, uh, you know, quote-unquote obligations and feedback mechanisms don't always have them. I mean, uh, the Obama administration was, was drone-striking U.S. citizens, um, extrajudicial killing, effectively, for, for cases of what they believe to be treason. Um, now, there's no doubt that this Saudi administration believed that what Khashoggi was doing in his support um, for what appears to have been a, a soft type of coup um, in that country was tantamount to treason. So that's the context behind it. It doesn't make it excusable, um, but it means we have to understand, that, you know, the, the parameters in which we're operating here. You cannot go from zero to 60 uh, that quickly, i.e. zero being let's do nothing about this and 60 being, uh, well, we have to sever all links with the Saudi uh, uh, administration. We have to cut all of the, um, right. all of the uh, deals that that we've been doing with them, so on and so forth. I mean, look at what the Germans have been doing with the Russians for the past couple of years with their gas pipeline. All the while, Russia treats uh, uh, dissenters and journalists probably worse than the Saudis do. Sure, but whether Saudi Arabia is in the process of reforming or not, you're talking about going from zero to 100, should the United States be so closely aligned with the leader allowing such acts, not only in his country but abroad, and one that the CIA is saying could have been instructed by him? Yeah, well, should is the is the is the operative word there. I mean, you know, should the United States be in the uh, be in the business of opposing uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in the wider region? Should the United States be in opposition to a, a theocratic dictatorship in Iran? And that's why I think geopolitically you're getting the current calculation that President Trump is making. Uh, this isn't about Khashoggi. This isn't about MBS. This is about broader geopolitical concerns. And none of that is is a clean business. It never has been. It never will be. Um, so so that's the, the you know that. Those are the auspices under which we consider this. And I think should, in the grand scheme of things, yes, unfortunately, I think I think they should be in business with the Saudis at this point. All right, at least uh, I just want to throw this question to Mohammed because at least what I'm hearing from Rahim is almost saying, which devil do you want to be associated with? And that's the uh, the problem here, that I'm, what I'm hearing and seeing and what everyone is upset about, that there is a mixing of the cards right here. No one is saying that the White House should sever diplomatic relationships with, with Saudi Arabia, with Riyadh. No one has uh, even said that there should not be any relationship with Saudi Arabia. But just like the U.S. exercises Iran, Venezuela, Turkey, and uh, Syria for that matter, the North Korean regime for its human rights uh, activities, just last year, let's not forget that the State Department imposed and suspended uh, financial and military aid to the Egyptian, uh, to, to the Egyptian army and uh, Egyptian government because of its lack of human rights uh, uh, records and its uh, record on uh, freedom of expression. So the U.S. can do something about it, and for it to stand still and not do anything, and it, everybody looks at it as uh, the leader of the free world. And here we see President Trump puts a price, putting a price on the life of a journalist uh, as long as money keeps uh, coming into the uh, into, into the U.S. And this is extremely dangerous. If you look at it strategically, this will endanger the national security of the United States. This activity is extremely endangering the U.S. And uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and his relationship with Jared Kushner is endangering the national security of the U.S. All right, Raheem, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, I just, I just want to say on, on that point, you know, you, you say you know, nobody's calling for the baby to be thrown out with the bathwater on this and that nobody's asking to sever the diplomatic links. And on the other hand, saying, oh, but the United States cannot sit around and do nothing. The United States hasn't sat around and done nothing. There have already been sanctions. There have already been expulsions. There are already the highest level conversations about uh, this and how this relationship moves forward. The only logical conclusion, uh, if we were to believe your correspondent, that, that, that is the next step to take is to oppose MBS in Saudi Arabia. And that's not worth doing at this point. If you can present to me a, a, a common sense scenario under how that takes place, how there's a transition of power, even though there's already been one in the last two years, then I'm all ears. But, but we're not do, sitting around and doing nothing. And, 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 and that's an escalation. To say that is an escalation. And I think that's what's really dangerous here. All right, Raheem, thank you so much for being with us and for sharing that insight with us. Uh, Mohammed, I want to get uh, just your final thoughts. Of course, we've heard from Raheem uh, defending the US-Saudi alliance. He's not alone. We have heard, uh, seen protests, though, around the world against uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, but yet, yet there are people that strongly support uh, the Crown Prince. 
Prince and the U.S.-Saudi alliance. Well, they do, because they have uh, their own uh, vested interest in pr uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman being in uh, in his position, the Crown Prince. There is There are military contracts, there are oil contracts, uh, and opportunities for investments in, in Saudi Arabia. And this, this is how... Crown Prince uh, MBS, as we refer to him, was able to become the celebrity, the uh, you know the, the the ruler, de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia that every Western leader and government uh, has been celebrating. That the you know that he's offering them super the superficial reforms, which really, to be quite honest with you, there hasn't been that much reforms or any difference that uh, this year than we've seen in past years. All with, with what what many people are seeing is saying that we're, we're we're seeing more chaos in the region. The Yemen war, which uh, uh, MBS as the engineer behind it. The hundreds of uh, activists uh, uh, that have been uh, arrested in the last uh, year or year and a half uh, in, in, in by, by him. That's what, what what's so in, you know dangerous uh, uh, that we're seeing right now then, by by Mohammed bin Salman. Right, and then the question remains that if those calling for MBS to be removed, if he was to be removed from power, who's to say that anyone would, that would have come in and replace him whether it would really change anything in any in any big way, in any significant way? I'm not